Let's start by determining where we are. The system prompt, as well as the configuration of root folders, can help us make this determination. I can see I'm in my Z8364A account, and I'm on a machine named OS Boxes. So I know I'm on a virtual machine named OS Boxes. The Docker command alone will show the command set. Docker has a process status command that we abbreviate to PS. Let's get help on that command. To get help on a command, you type hyphen hyphen help after the command and hit enter. Notice that Docker has multi-level help. The PS command alone displays any containers that are currently running. Looks like nothing is running at the moment. When we add the A option, we list all containers that have been run. We can also review the contents of our local image cache. This contains images with unique names and version tags. Hello. At this point, I wouldn't blame you if you're feeling a little confused because we've been talking about Docker images and Docker containers, and the difference can be a little odd. A Docker image is a read-only template. You can't change it. You can recreate it, but you cannot change one once it's created. It is used as the basis of producing Docker containers. You get a container when you take an image and run it. Once a container is running, everything that was in that image is available to you when you're working in it, and it's a process in Unix terms. As it's running, you may make changes to that container, and then you can stop the container. The container could be restarted, and the changes would still be there. But the original image that we started to produce the container does not change. So you have a read-only image, and you have a processing construct called a container. Now here's where the confusion can come in. Because if you have made useful changes to a container and think that someone else might want to use that version, you can save a container in such a way that it becomes a new image. You can't update the original image from which it was started, but you can create a new one. So let's just remember that an image is read-only has everything you need to do something, and once you start it, that creates a container. So let's create a container by running the sent OS image. The Docker command qualifies run, and we want an interactive terminal, and we're going to use the sent OS image. At this point, we can practice our new skills to determine where we are. I'm now in a root account rather than my Z8364A account, and instead of the OS Boxes virtual machine, I'm in a container whose ID begins with B07. Yes, indeed, we're inside a container. So let's check out some of the development tools. The C++ compiler and make utilities are both gone. Java is missing, so it looks like CentOS out of the box is definitely not a developer-friendly machine. It's time to leave this container and head back to our virtual machine. So now, let's run another CentOS image, but this image has been specifically pre-configured for developers. So now, when we try the G plus plus command for the C++ compiler, we get an error, but it came from the C++ compiler, so it is available. When we try make, the same situation occurs. C++ compiler and the make utility are both available. But we'll have to add Java to this container. We'll manually configure a container using the same tools we use to configure a virtual machine. On CentOS, we use the Yellow Dog Updater Modified or YUM program. 
Yum lets us install a Java CentOS package. Now the package installation is complete, so let's try to verify our development tools. Yes, everything seems to be in place, but that leaves us with a question. What do you think will happen to Java when we exit this container? Think about that, and we'll come back to it.